Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Welcome to the IAC West 2020 virtual session entitled Cisco Meraki MV Smart Cameras, the security and intelligence needed for today's world. Before I begin a quick intro on myself, my name is Geraldine and I'm a product manager for the MV Smart Cameras. Um, I moved to Cisco Meraki from Intel in 2018 because I really wanted to work on an end product that I could be very passionate about that really provided value to customers. I have a background in electrical engineering from Stanford University. I grew up in Manila, Philippines, so you may hear a slight Tagalog accent here and there. Um, and a fun fact is that I enjoy rock climbing. This here is a photo of me from a trip to South Lake Tahoe about a few weekends ago. So what are we going to talk about today? Um, today's session is really going to have three parts. The first is going into the MV architecture um, by starting with a little bit about what Cisco Meraki is all about. Um, and then I'll go into what is probably familiar to many of you, which is what are the challenges you find in traditional security camera systems today? And then I'll move into what makes the Meraki MV architecture so different um, and then end the section by going through the different um, hardware models that we have. The middle part is really the meat of this session, which is talking about what it's like to use the MV from a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I'll go through some of the core security camera use cases um, and then show you an actual demo of how these features are used on the dashboard. The second part of the section is talking about the analytics that we have on the camera. Um, and then I'll end this section with a demo of one of the more recent solutions that we've built. And then the finally, the last part is just how to learn more, more info on licensing, the entire Meraki portfolio, and then next steps. So what is Meraki? If you're not familiar with us, we say that we create technology that simply works. We were acquired by Cisco um, in 2012 and have become one of their fastest growing portfolios. And this is because what we provide is this complete cloud-managed IT solution that integrates hardware, software, and the cloud. So in this photo here, you can see your access points, your security appliances, switches, um, cellular gateways, endpoint management, and security cameras, all managed centrally through a single pane of glass. And this Meraki cloud is the largest and most battle-tested cloud platform in networking today. We have about half a million customers, 7 million active devices, and about 2 million networks running right now. And really what we've built with the MV cameras is security cameras for a world that's becoming increasingly IT-centric. And what I mean by that is when we talk to a lot of our existing Meraki customers, many of them are IT teams that inherit the boxes and boxes of NVRs and DVRs and the rest of the hardware that come with security camera systems. And this entire deployment can be very complex. Um, we have heard stories where um, a customer was trying to pull up video and they realized that the cameras hadn't been recording for a long time. Um, and they weren't sure if it was the cameras that were broken or the NVRs that were broken or just there was an issue with the software. Um, we've also heard stories about how when a customer went in to try to upgrade their software, they realized they also needed to upgrade the software for the NVR and the camera as well. In conclusion, the, the architecture for traditional security cameras can be very complex and with complexity can also be vulnerability. So as an IT admin, one of your main concerns is needing to make sure your network is protected from outside threats. Um, you also want to make sure that video, which is very sensitive information, is only accessed by the people that need to. And on top of that, you also want to sometimes be able to provide different levels of access to different types of users. For example, you want someone to only be able to view live video uh, versus someone who, say, is a director and you should be able to give them 
full access to view and export from the cameras. Another issue here is um, just a few years ago, an IPVM survey uncovered that more than half of the people still use spreadsheets to manage passwords. Um, and that's since improved over the years with management software, but it can still be a challenge to be able to maintain that secure access across all your users. And complexity isn't cheap. It costs time and money to get by. Um, and often what we see with organizations is that they will need to compromise between security and usability. In order to protect your network from outside threats, it has to be a little less usable. There has to be more hoops and more steps in order to access your cameras. Um, but if you want it to be usable, you end up creating a network that's not very secure. And simplicity is really a benefit that not many can attain. Imagine how quickly um, different companies can set up new buildings if their cameras were easy to deploy and maintain. Um, how much money would an organization have left if they spent less money maintaining their system um, and leave more money for more innovative projects? Um, what could a school with a single IT admin achieve um, if the cameras were very easy to deploy and to maintain? We actually heard a story from one of our K through 12 customers that said that their facilities team um, was able to work on accessible restrooms a lot sooner than they had planned because the cameras just took such little time to deploy. This simplicity is what we offer for the MV Smart Cameras, a simple architecture that allows any organization to accomplish more. How we have achieved this is we applied Meraki's expertise in cloud and user experience design to the realm of video surveillance. And we, we really pride ourselves in saying that we listen to our customers and make sure that we build the right solutions to each of their problems, instead of just building something that has more and more features, but ends up being really complex or complicated to use. The solution that we've built is this cutting edge architecture. In this diagram here, all you really need is the camera. Um, the cameras here are recording video on the device itself, so no need for NVRs. Um, and then this footage can be viewed and managed through either a, lo a local connection or a secure cloud proxy. And we actually make that determination for you. There is intelligent streaming that automatically knows whether or not you're local. Um, and if you're not, it creates that secure cloud proxy for you. We're also bandwidth conscious in that when you're not watching video, we're only using less than 50 kilobits per second of upstream bandwidth. And this is for things like management data, configuration data, and metadata. And that metadata really comes from this hybrid video processing that we have. On top of just recording on the camera itself, we're actually doing a bulk of the video processing on the camera. So we have advanced analytics, we have motion analytics, but we also have object detection analytics that are all running on the camera itself. But in addition to running that processing, we're also sending metadata into the cloud so that when you're actually using the dashboard and doing things like retrieving those analytics, it takes us um, seconds to obtain that data. And this entire architecture is designed with security in mind. So we have a hardware security chip on each camera. Everything is encrypted by default, both at rest and in transit. Um, firmware is kept up to date. Um, and you're also able to configure those unique usernames, passwords, and access for each user. As a recap, the MV Smart Camera family is the only security camera from a cloud leader today. All of them are managed centrally through the Meraki dashboard, um, and they have about up to 512 gigabytes of solid state storage on each camera. They're also wireless and audio capable. 
In terms of recording, we offer a variety of options. So you can do things like scheduled recording, motion-based retention, um, and different quality and resolution options. We also provide a additional cloud archive license um, for those that have stricter retention requirements. And finally, all of them have this advanced processor that allow them to act as sensors um, and provide more information than just using cameras for security. Um, so I'm gonna show a quick video of what it's like to actually deploy and initially configure an MV camera. So now that you've seen a video of what it's like to deploy a camera, these are the current offerings that we have. So from left to right, we have the Indoor MV32, which is our 360 degree fisheye camera. This is very handy if you're wanting to get that complete coverage and additional context at your sites. We also have the MV12 series, which is our fixed lens compact camera. Um, which is very helpful if you just want to be able to record um, and you know exactly what field of view you want. But if you want that flexibility to zoom in and out, we have the MV22 series, which is our indoor very focal camera. And then finally, we have the MV72 series, which is basically the outdoor version of the MV22, which is IP67 and IK10 plus rated for demanding outdoor environments. And one thing I want to note about all these cameras is that they're wireless capable. And really, some of the use cases that this enables is if you're wanting to upgrade from analog. We know that it can be really time consuming and costly to rip and replace your analog cabling with Ethernet. And with cameras that are wireless capable, what you can do is power them using the um, existing analog cabling, and then have them transmit their data wirelessly. The same setup is really helpful if you're deploying a camera in remote or outdoor areas where it can be hard to um, extend your cabling. And then finally, there's also the use case where you just want something temporarily. Say you have an event over the weekend um, and you don't want to have to bring cabling all the way out there. You can use any power source um, that can deliver PoE to the camera um, and then power it that way, but have it transmit data wirelessly. We actually provide an accessory that helps you do this. We have the MV low voltage power adapter that can take any 12 volt DC or 24 volt AC input and give PoE. 
Um, and then once the camera is powered, it can connect to the, near, the nearest access point um, once you've configured the wireless profile on the dashboard. So earlier I talked about how the architecture of MV reduces the complexity in this IT-centric world. But you want to make sure that as security cameras, these are also able to meet your needs. And so this middle part is talking about how our smart security cameras are really enabling use cases for this security-centric world. And instead of hearing it from me, let's hear from one of our current MV customers about how they're using MV today. So the goal is for us to really, from a student standpoint and a staff standpoint, to make sure that every individual in this building feels safe, they feel comfortable coming here, and that they know we are on top of every situation that could arise at the building. Uh, so Reading School District is an urban district in Pennsylvania uh, with about 18,000 kids, uh, about 2,000 employees. We have five miles of hallway that need to be covered and probably in the range of 15 security guards. So obviously we need the assistance of the technology. So we've begun uh, deploying MV across the district and today we have five sites complete at about 400 cameras total uh, and that will probably uh, triple over the next year. And with our previous deployment, uh, we had a lot of NVRs uh, and in those NVRs are a lot of spinning disks and spinning disks like to die all the time. Typically when uh, one hard drive would die, it would take the whole unit down. So that was about 20 cameras that we would lose. Uh, and that's just not appropriate. Our cameras would go down here, I'd have to you know, make a phone call. And it's basically down to one guy now for the whole, for the whole like East Coast, I believe. So he'd be pretty busy, so it might take him three weeks to get here. And that's a little bit of a problem when we have a school with almost 3,000 kids to not have coverage. And that's all very different with MV. You know, there's no more spinning disks. We don't have that anymore. If a camera goes down, that's one camera that's going down. Uh, and that's something that we can very easily uh, troubleshoot and handle internally. Now that we're on the MV platform, uh, training has been uh, a lot uh, simpler than what it needed to be previously. We've done one training session and I was able to cover all the features. And now internally within the department, they've been able to, to train each other. The motion search is, is still probably one of the most impressive features to me because it's very, very small scale that you can you know, essentially highlight blocks and look for movement or activity uh, uh, in the footage. And um, it's really been very helpful to, to determine patterns of behavior and changes in, in the footage. So we're really looking forward to what the cameras can capture in the future for us as far as analytics goes. So even today with just the people tracking, uh, it's obvious that this is a very powerful feature. And so we're really looking forward to what uh, Meraki can bring with us. Reading School District is just one of the many customers we have today that are using our cameras for very core security purposes. So one of the main security needs that we hear a lot is wanting cameras to ensure that people are safe. So for schools, this is to monitor incidents like vandalism or bullying. Um, for retail and for a lot of other industries, this is just making sure that your workers are kept safe. You want to make sure you monitor for different accidents or things that um, could affect insurance. Another use case that is prevalent for verticals like retail or manufacturing is wanting to protect your assets. This example here on the slide is maybe an IT admin that wants to protect the thousands and thousands of dollars worth of networking equipment in an IT closet. But you can think about this as um, retail also wanting to monitor their inventory or manufacturing wanting to make sure that there aren't any process failures. On YouTube, we actually have a number of our manufacturing customers that have attested to how easy it was for them to investigate different process failures or incidents at their factories with the MV cameras. And finally, there's also the more general use case of just wanting the cameras to be able to make sure that nothing's happening. So this is maybe the use case where you have those security guards at a guard house with a dedicated workstation pulled up, or you have a front desk worker that's just being able to monitor the different sites that they can't necessarily see from where they are. In order to meet these security-centric needs, the Meraki dashboard is able to 
enable proactive monitoring for live video or intelligent alerts. You're able to easily respond to these alerts in real time, um, but you're also able to retroactively investigate video um, or events and share that to the relevant people. And one of the core differentiators that we have on MV to enable these is a feature called motion recap. And this is actually something we have a patent for because what we've been able to do is subtract the background and create a single image that superimposes various frames related to a single incident. So this photo here is not 15 people walking down a conga line. Um, it's actually one person walking from this point of the store to another point of the store. And really this is extremely powerful because when you're needing to investigate events, you wanna be able to review different results. And with motion recap, you can essentially review an entire event in a single image. We use motion recap also when we do motion alerts. So you can configure a specific area of interest and get alerted when motion was found there. And when you pull up that alert, what you can see is, again, this motion recap image, which gives you a preview of just what that event was. We also use motion recap for motion search. And motion search is our feature where you can um, select a time range and an area within the camera's frame, um, and then find different possible events. So in the screenshot here, I have multiple motion recap images that I can just easily flip through to find exactly which one I need to investigate further and possibly share with the authorities. And as I mentioned earlier, we also have object detection. So you can even use this information to filter your results even further. So you can do alerting or motion search based on people detection only. In this example here, we filtered by people and so you can see that yellow bounding box around that person. And so I was only able to see all the motion recap images that actually had people in them and maybe not trees blowing in the wind or even a dog running by. And then one more thing that can be really impactful for responding to incidents is this external live stream sharing feature. And basically what this enables is that you can share live footage to anyone, even someone who isn't a Meraki dashboard user. Um, so this gives them temporary access to the live video of a particular camera so that if they're helping respond to an incident, they also get that added vantage point. One of our more recent additions is this combined exports feature. And this really is coming from feedback from customers, especially in retail, that in order to investigate a single incident, they may have to look through five, 10, or 15 cameras. And once they've found the right event on each camera, they're gonna export that piece of footage. And at the end of the day, they need to send upwards of 15 different MP4 files to the authorities. But with this feature, what you can do is combine all of those video footage and only submit one video file to the authorities. One more thing that we have on the camera is a snapshot API. And this API allows you to get a single frame from the camera so that you can integrate it with something else. The example shown here is one of our integrations with access control that basically allows you to associate a single snapshot with every badge entry or badge exit. This is really helpful because the camera then provides this added layer of visibility to your access control system. Another use case for snapshot API is wanting to do more advanced analytics. So this is an integration we have with plate recognizer where they were easily just able to get snapshots from the camera to perform their um, license plate recognition. Now let me show you um, all of these core features and more um, on the Meraki dashboard. 
All right, so this is going to be a quick demonstration of what it's like to use the Meraki dashboard with your MV Smart cameras. So typically you will log in and view this page here, which lists you all the cameras that you have in your network. This example here is the Meraki San Francisco office, and we have about um, 28 cameras. Um, this bar up here is really great because it gives you visibility into how many of your cameras have been online and working perfectly, but also how many have been alerting with a possible issue or even how many have gone offline. Um, you can also view these connectivity graphs to see if there were any blips in connectivity so that you can look back and make sure that your cameras were recording just fine. Um, you can customize the different columns on this list. Um, if you care about certain things or not care about certain things, um, you can clean it up depending on your use case. You can easily search a camera by model number, so say all the MV32 cameras, um, but in my case, I wanna search by name. So maybe I click on the staircase camera, and then what I land on is this uh, video player page here. One thing I want to call out is this little icon on the bottom left, which um, currently tells me that I'm cloud streaming. Unfortunately, not a lot of people are working from the office right now, so I don't have that direct IP connection so that I can view this camera um, locally. Um, with the intelligent streaming that you have on MVs, we make that determination for you whether or not you have that direct IP connection. Um, and in this case, it initiated this secure cloud proxy so that I can view this camera. One more thing I wanna highlight is the share live stream link. What you can do if you're wanting to allow someone temporary access to the camera in response to an incident, you can do that um, and send them an email that they can pull up to quickly be able to view the footage on this camera. If you wanna go back to historical video, there are a number of options. You can use this timeline here. You can even quickly hover over different motion blocks and see possible events that you care about. Um, you can go back to a specific date. Um, or my personal favorite is using this text input here. Um, and it's great because it actually accepts natural language. So I can say 1 p.m. Friday, and it'll go back to 1 p.m. Friday. I can do last Wednesday, and it'll go back to last Wednesday. Um, but instead of using the timeline and the, the date picker here, a really powerful tool that we have is the motion search feature. So what you can do is you can select a specific area um, and then indicate a time range, say I wanna do you know, over lunch on that day. What it actually does is it gives you those results in the form of motion recap images. And instead of needing to sit and review all these videos, with motion recap, I can quickly preview the entire event and just quickly scroll through all these different results. Say that you know, this is the one that I care about. I can play the video. Um, I can use some keyboard shortcuts to fast forward. And then I can take a screenshot and do um, an export of that specific time range so that I can send it to um, the right people. And we have a lot of customers um, in different verticals. And when they are conducting an investigation on an incident, they may end up doing multiple exports across multiple cameras. Um, and what we provide is the exports page where basically what you can do is you can select and combine different exports. So all you need is to send a single um, video file to the authorities. If you're someone who is an integrator or a installer, maybe you will spend most of your time in this settings page. And from this tab, you can do things like enable HDR, um, sensor crop, or even privacy windows. You actually saw a couple of privacy windows earlier, and this is because 
This is actually a conference room that sometimes has you know, sensitive meetings. So we wanna make sure that we're not recording any footage for those areas. From here, you can change your different quality and retention settings. Um, you can do it by doing um, profiles as well. And this can be really helpful because you can apply these in bulk. So say you have hundreds of cameras that you need to deploy, you don't need to configure each of them manually. Um, say we wanna configure these manually. Um, from this page, you can change the resolution and the quality. Right now, this is recording um, at the highest quality and resolution, um, but it's only giving us about seven days. So I can decrease the resolution and the quality and actually see how those changes affect my retention. We have customers that do scheduled recording because maybe they don't need footage for 24 hours of a day. Um, you can do schedules such as weekdays only or weekends only. What a lot of people use is actually this motion-based retention feature. And as opposed to motion-based recording, what we do is we, re we record all the video, but then we go back and we actually take out any events that didn't see any motion. Um, with motion-based retention, you're actually not missing those one or two seconds that sometimes can be missed if you're doing something like motion-based recording. With motion-based retention, you can configure areas of interest, say only care about motion here and down the stairs, um, and not you know, in this little staircase down here. <clears throat> I can do that and get a little bit more retention. And what's really great is you can actually see the estimate go up or down in real time based on the data that this particular camera saw. So unfortunately, you know, there's not a lot of people in the office, so you only get about three hours of motion a day. But say in a non-pandemic world, this camera here, which is a staircase, is probably getting a lot of foot traffic. Um, so you would be able to see that data affect the estimation here. From this tab, you can do things like configure night mode, um, but also motion alerts. With our motion alerts, you can do different uh, minimum duration triggers, different sensitivity. You can also add areas of interest. Um, but you can also alert only on people events. So as I mentioned, we have that advanced analytics. Um, so you can also do uh, motion alerts, but only when specific people are detected. And speaking of the analytics, um, I will show you also this analytics tab. So say we wanna look at the entrances on last Friday. Um, here I can see there was a pretty high peak around 11, so let me drill deeper into what that specific event was. Um, and I can go a little bit more into the specific minute, and then I can wait to see what detections were actually seen on this camera at that time. I can use the keyboard shortcuts. It's actually detecting people from the reflection there. But let's fast forward a little bit more and pause. So here you can see that um, this person here was enclosed by this yellow bounding, yellow bounding box, which tells you she was detected as a person. And then this can be really helpful when you're also doing motion search. You can filter and say, I only wanna see for detected people. As I mentioned, it's helpful for motion alerts. But in general, it also adds a little bit of intelligence to your cameras. What we have, um, if we expand to an hourly, res hourly resolution is the ability to see motion heat map, so I can see vaguely where people are moving in, in the space, but with people detection information, I can even see you know, how many people are actually coming in and out um, and maybe be able to filter out events that are trees moving in the wind or 
um, cars driving by. So a couple more pages I want to show you are um, firstly the camera only admins. So I mentioned earlier that there can be a need to provide very granular access to different users for the cameras. Say you want certain individuals to be able to view and export footage from all cameras, but maybe you have some users that you only want to make sure are able to view footage that's live and also on select cameras. Um, you can do very granular settings here with the MB cameras. Additionally, what we have is also the access log, which allows you to just double check um, who's been viewing video and when. From here, you can do filtering by date range, but also by camera or by um, event type. So you can see if people are viewing video, but also even taking screenshots or creating exports. And finally, what I want to show you is the video wall. So this here is very impactful for the use case of just wanting to be able to see all your sites and make sure that nothing is going wrong. In the SF office, we have a few video walls. These are the bike room cameras. Um, and then we also have a wall with all your staircase cameras. Um, and then one for the cameras that are looking outside. And if you're someone who is at a front desk with a dedicated screen, what you might want to do is configure this auto rotation so that you don't need to click through the different layouts. You can just save and start a rotation, um, and it'll actually just go through all the cameras that you need. So as I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of features here on the Meraki dashboard that makes it easy for someone to use the cameras from a safety and security standpoint. What I showed you is really just a subset of all the functionality that we provide on the Meraki dashboard but it doesn't stop there. We will continue to be launching more and more features at a reasonably fast velocity in order to enable different use cases. And really the pillars or the principles that guide this feature development are three main things. So the first is cost reduction through architectural simplification. And this talks a little bit more about the hardware and not the software on the Meraki dashboard, but basically, we started with this by actually launching this camera with a new architecture. But as we expand our portfolio, what we'll do is just make sure that each new hardware that we launch enables more use cases and also keeps that simplicity that we've had in the beginning. The next principle is operational simplification through automation. And this refers to the majority of the Meraki dashboard features that we have. Really what we aim to do is listen and respond to all the comments on what things our users do repetitively and every day on the Meraki dashboard and trying to make those tasks easier and faster for you. So the motion search and the motion recap feature um, are some examples of those as well as the combined exports feature. And finally, the last is business value through intelligence. And this one here isn't as centered on physical security, but I'll talk a little bit about what we do here and how maybe it also enables some of the core security use cases. What we provide is analytics at no extra cost. So when you pull up the Meraki dashboard with each second generation camera, you see um, object detection data. With the MV72 outdoor camera, you also get vehicle detection data. So as a customer, you can easily do things like understand customer behavior patterns. Maybe you can see when you have more, more or less foot traffic in your stores, and also which zones are getting the most foot traffic. You can integrate our vehicle detection with our snapshot API and be able to do license plate recognition when, cam uh, when vehicles are actually detected. And on top of what we provide on the dashboard itself, we also have open APIs. 
And really, the open APIs enable some of the more specific but very important use cases across all our customers. So with the raw information from the MVSense APIs, you're able to get that detection data and do things like custom alerting or custom dashboard. With the LiveLink API, you can easily integrate different systems with the video footage that we provide on the dashboard. And then we also have the Snapshot API, which lets you get a frame from the camera and integrate that with other systems or add on advanced analytics as well. So again, some other very um, core use cases are for retail, if you want employees to be notified when there's a, um, a group of people that need assistance, for education, if you want to monitor um, whether or not there are people where they're not supposed to be, and for public safety, if you want to make sure that the building is empty after an evacuation. Some use cases that have been more and more relevant recently have been around COVID-19. We live in this new, I still can't really believe that we're, we're in this right now, but the partners that we have with MV have been able to very quickly develop things that add impact in today's world. So one in particular that I'll highlight is Jagogo, one of our partners, developed this dashboard that lets you monitor the occupancy of um, your space. So it's being used here by a pharmacy chain. And really what this enables is the workers at this pharmacy chain don't need to focus on counting how many people are inside because the MV cameras do that for you and they can actually focus on enforcing the security measures or the safety measures. And then this is a video of another one of our partners, VApp, that actually enforces social distancing with the MV cameras. And this is enabled through our real-time um, MVSense APIs that not only give you detection information, but also location information. So I'm going to jump from the video to another demo, which is a solution we built on top of our external RTSP feature. So we have the ability of sending an external RTSP stream from our cameras to enable more advanced analytics that require that full video stream. So this here is a demo of us doing face mask detection so that when you deploy these at your different um, sites or offices, it's easy for you to monitor if someone is wearing a face mask and following all the protocols. Um, I started this demo by running this Python script that is running that um, machine learning algorithm to detect face masks. And what I have here is an online portal that shows me the RTSP stream and the results of that detection. So the MV camera is right behind me. Um, I'm gonna wear a mask and hold the camera up to my face. Um, and then you should be able to see the result of that face mask detection. All right, so you were able to, to see just now that the mask that I was wearing was indeed detected at a certain level of confidence I mean, again, this is gonna be very helpful, especially with the current um, situation that we're in. And really when I think about how quickly customers and partners were able to deploy MV and deploy these solutions around COVID-19, there's really not a lot of ways I can describe it except it's the Meraki magic in action. Our simple architecture and intuitive interface really enables all of this. 
with cameras that are simple to deploy, secure by default, and powerful in terms of security-centric investigative tools, but also advanced analytics, you have a solution that really enables um, your customers or organizations to do a lot more with their time. So before I end, I want to give a little bit more information on the licensing and also the rest of the Meraki portfolio. So we have a simple licensing model. It's one software license to one camera. We have three-year warranty on all models. Um, you have the ability to update your software based on bug fixes or new features at no extra cost. Um, and then we have 24-7 end user support. With this license, what you get access to is the Meraki dashboard, which on top of what I showed in the demo and I talked about in this session, um, has a number of other functionality and features as well. So I also want to remind everyone that Meraki is not just cameras. We're the entire um, Meraki platform. We are basically a premium IT product that doesn't require a lot of training. So if you're someone who's wanting to quickly get ramped up on a product that can easily be used by customers, it doesn't take a lot to be a reseller integrator with Meraki um, and get to know how the rest of our portfolio works on top of just the cameras. On top of that, the Meraki platform is constantly evolving. Um, after launching the MV cameras about four years ago, we continue to listen to opportunities where we can help our existing customers. And in a couple of weeks or so, um, there will be an announcement for how we're expanding the Meraki magic into different other use cases. For next steps, you can look at our website to get started on an evaluation, to learn more, um, and to get in contact with the Meraki sales rep. Thank you so much for your time, and I hope you enjoyed today's session.